Hi everyone, I'm Lindsay Galloway. I'm with Genius Sports here at Sport Beach and I'm here with the GM of Advertising for Genius Sports, Manny Puentes. Manny, thanks for being here today. Oh, thank you for having me, Lindsay. Would love to hear how your can has been. Uh, what is your overall experience? Uh, what are the highlights for you so far? Can's uh, always awesome, but I think this year sports is a, a trending uh, topic here at Can. Uh, really excited, Genius Sports is at the intersection of that, and we're here to represent a lot of the great things that we're doing. So there's been a lot of talk about the foretold deprecation of the cookie. Uh, when it comes to reaching sports fans in particular, what are the things that brands need to be aware of uh, in the cookie-less environment? The cookie is getting deprecated, right? And I think there's a lot of talk about that. but. At the end of the day, uh, it's actually really good for our industry because uh, the cookie has really played its role in advertising, but it's now time to get rid of it. And I'll give you a couple reasons why. Um, essentially, if I think about the cookie having a different identity uh, on every platform that you use that represents you, right? Uh, you know, in our case. Um, generically speaking, we say audience, but for us, it's the fan. And so, uh, in the past, that cookie, essentially, if you were working with three different platforms, had three different IDs, and that becomes really hard when you want to, you know, have a cohesive strategy on how to reach the fan. And so, there's been a lot of innovation around how we were, how we're going to replace the cookie. And. Uh, you know, I think there's, uh, now we're at this point where we're getting to um, be able to have a more stable ID for the fan. And so what that does is it brings a whole new world of measurement. It brings um, the stability in how to reach the fan. It gives us the ability to have a real conversation with the fan. Uh, instead of having a really fragmented environment, um, we're more, we're gonna stabilize that environment. And I would think that uh, and not think, but know that um, a lot of that change has happened because of uh, privacy regulation has really forced a lot of innovation in the market. Um, and it's a good thing, right? Um, so I would say the deprecation is, is going to give us that really cohesive view of the fan that allows us to generate KPIs and measurement and reporting and really, really get a good understanding of um, our, you know, an ROI or, you know, the KPIs that you're trying to reach or goals that you're trying to reach. Great. And so what, when it comes to the future of sports technology, what are you most excited about? <laughs> well, I mean, at Genius Sports, we have an investment uh, that is really going to change the world, if, if you ask me, around how we're uh, measuring and tracking and uh, viewing uh, live in-game sports. Uh, so we have computer vision, optical tracking that we deploy today. Uh, we have cameras in, in, in Premier League stadiums. Like That's the beginning of uh, mass innovation and change because essentially things that you know you used to do manually are actually now collected programmatically. And uh, when I say things, I mean data collection, right? Um, and data and data is a, data is a, an incredibly big asset or valuable asset when it comes to understanding the fan, um, understanding what's going on in the game. And, I, and the reason why I say understanding the fan and what's going on in the game is because um, in our industry we're starting to talk about like moments that matter. Um, and one of the things that I, I think that you know is going to be interesting and very innovative is that. Um, today, you know, traditional media or, and how you buy uh, in some of these platforms, there's a lot of pre-roll, what they call pre-roll, post-roll, mid-roll. Um, but if you think about, like, if you're a fan and you're watching your favorite team or you're, you know, engaging with your favorite sport, um, there, I mean, we all hate ad breaks, right? I think, yeah. But at the end of the day, it's just intrusive to the experience, right? Um, so, you know, essentially technology is opening up uh, a lot more of um, these immersive formats that are going to be uh, now part of your, you know, everyday entertainment when you're watching uh, your favorite team or engaging with your, with your favorite league. 
in that um, instead of having that ad break in the middle of the game, right? We all like, ah, except, you know, Super Bowl's kind of cool when you get Always. to watch the ads. Uh, you're going to be able to see and have the opportunity to align your brand in a moment that really mattered. So just kind of triangulating back or circling back to the original statement, which was technology and optical tracking and computer vision that has um, the ability to know of uh, everything that's going on in the field. What that means is when you start to tie a lot of the things that are happening on the field um, together with what you know about the broader um, uh, you know, campaign strategies that you deploy and you target audiences, um, we're now at the place you know, today where if there's a, a goal kicked, right, um, we can actually deploy uh, a campaign or like increase the pacing on a campaign or we can um, actually surface a, a brand right next to the moment that actually mattered, right? right? So a lot of the funny part about this is like when we when we talk about this is like um, some of the strategies where they're saying, hey, reach fans, moments that matter. It's like, uh, but you know, during the ad break, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? But not, but but with us, it's like when the goals actually kicked. If if you're if you're thinking about you know soccer, um, you're actually going to have the brand that's you know uh, d displayed right right above the goal, which is like, and if that is a winning kick for some team, you know, for 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 the team, you know, that's I don't think it gets better than that. Right. <laughs> Perfect. And to talk about that a little bit, like when it comes to personalizing the experience for the fan, what are some of the ways that you, you think about personalizing every fan's experience? Yeah, just diving a little into uh, deeper into the advertising ecosystem. You know, there are two sides to the ecosystem. There's the content, right, that uh, fans engage with. And then there's um, there are the technology and the platforms to actually interact with that content to reach the fan. Right. When we're when at, at Genius, when we're looking at, uh, let's say, you know, you hear a lot of talk in advertising about an identity graph. Um, when you hear that, you know, you think about, oh, okay, well, I'm going to use that identity graph to reach this fan uh, across their devices, or I'm going to use that identity graph to reach them across platforms. Um, but that's on the that's on the side where you're uh, you know looking to reach the fan through a platform uh, at genius like one of the things that's incredibly powerful is that we use that identity graph as well on the content provider side or on the publisher side and that's really important right because it's not only about reaching the fan it's understanding their journey um, and where they're actually engaging and you know at genius we also have fan engagement and, and tools for content providers and publishers to continue to keep that attention. Um, and so the, attentions, the attention market and the attention space is really important, right? We always want to be engaging. We want to bring uh, consumable content, quick consumable content. As you know, TikTok and, uh, and all the other platforms is really, have really trained us to be um, attuned and aware and we want our content and we want it now. Uh, and, and then we want to continue to uh, engage with it, right, if it's different. And so because we have the data and we understand the fan, and we have a 360-degree view of the fan, and we also know what the fan likes when it comes to different sports and, and different teams during different seasons, um, we're always going to help uh, content providers and publishers um, get that view, right? And the reason and the way that we do that is to is to provide them with the data to do so. Perfect, and when it comes to creative itself, what, how does that data inform the creative that you can do at Genius? Look, I, I mean, I think what you're touching on in all these questions, which are, which are really great questions, is that it's more of an ecosystem, more than it is just a platform. And so at Genius, we also have the ability to have dynamic creative, right? And that dynamic creative is really personalized to um, to actually engage with that fan, right? That we, you know, with the information that we know about them. Um, so like at Genius, I think we like to say we, you know, we deliver um, experiences, not impressions. And I think it goes back to the ecosystem of uh, the, all of the, the technologies and strategies that we deploy um, that make us really good uh, in advertising and 
and in sports, right? So like we are, we are actually uh, at the perfect intersection of that. I was going to ask about uh, curated inventory and curated marketplace. I feel like that's another trend that's uh, that's been big, especially across different verticals. Can you talk about how that looks at Genius and how you're thinking about curated audiences and curated inventory? I think you know when we talk about curated um, audiences and curated inventory, um, it all comes back to a lot of the changes that you're seeing in our industry when it comes to privacy and regulation. Um, it used to be really easy, so I've been in advertising for 26 years and uh, I've seen all of the evolutions of, of advertising and it, it used to be that it was really easy to um, have a data strategy in advertising, right? You could go out, work with different partners and um, you were able to collect data and with uh, a lot of the privacy and regulation and consent that's in place today, you now have to go and um, deploy a lot of the consent frameworks and adhere to a lot of the uh, privacy and regulation and compliance. But what that means is that data is where it used to be ubiquitous and across every partner and every platform. Think of the data as moving to the edges, right? So. Um, publishers own their data, right, and brands own their data, and somehow you've got to bring those together. Giving you kind of the history of the data and how it's moving to the edges, um, it all comes down to uh, first party and zero party and who owns the data and, and how close you can get to the data, right? Uh, and essentially, uh, when it was really easy and very ubiquitous and at scale you could grab data, you were probably one or two or three degrees uh, apart from the actual source. And now you have to be um, the source or close, you know, uh, one step away from the source if you don't own it. But, you know, that comes to first party and zero party. Zero party is when you're actually um, engaging with the fan themselves and they're giving you the data through some method or medium of technology. And so at Genius, like, we are completely connected uh, at, on a first party basis with that data. And so we have this unique view of being able to collect that and having, and having the fidelity of that data be incredibly high. So continuing to walk through that journey, um, I think you hear a lot about curated markets, right? And curated markets are the way to essentially use the data that you have to create this curated marketplace of what you think the fan is not completely interested in that will get their attention. And so because we have such a rich data set, um, a byproduct of that is creating an incredible curated market. And so we believe that we have the best curated markets uh, in sport because, well, we don't know anything other than sports and we only engage with fans. And so for us, curated markets is a powerful position for us and curated audiences. And it all comes down to um, how far away you are from the data. And well, we're really incredibly close. So it's really easy for us to, to have that quality in all of our products because all we do is work with leagues and teams and, and sports fans. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Manny. Really appreciated all the insight. Yep, no problem.